lot of work with We Won't Fly. He was co-founder with We Won't Fly. He's done tremendous work with Fully Informed Jury Association. And if there's one thing that comes to mind when I think of Jim Babb, it's just uh, it's personal nullification and leave me the blank alone. So please give it up for Mr. Jim Babb. <laughs> with you guys today. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of summarize why we need to end the Fed. Not that you guys really need to know that, but I think it's important to remember that. Uh, and I'm, I'm also going to review some of the tactics that the regime uses to protect its criminal operation. But I'm not just here to complain. We don't have to just sit here and take it. It's taken about a hundred years but we finally have some of the tools available to make the Federal Reserve obsolete. So why should we end the Fed? Randolph Bourne wrote that war is the health of the state. So if you oppose war, you must oppose the state. Yeah. And if you oppose the state, you must oppose its lifeblood, the Federal Reserve. Woo! The thing that makes the Fed an enemy of freedom is that it relies upon coercion. And it enables aggression on a scale that the world had never seen before. For the past 100 years, this racket has confiscated over 95% of the wealth of this country. And it's left behind countless billions of bodies in its wake. In conjunction with the legal tender laws, the Fed systematically extracts the wealth of everyone holding U.S. currency. And with their political partners, they are assured the power to continue doing this to future generations. <laughs> so, without fiat currency, wars are very difficult to finance. Tax victims quickly, quickly grow weary of endless war. Wars of aggression are particularly hard to sell. When folks are expected to pay for these wars out of their own pocket, suddenly everyone becomes a peacenik. But politicians love war because the scared masses happily turn over their resources and their freedom. So, but these wars are expensive and politicians don't have any of their own money to spend. So they could raise taxes, but that's not politically viable for very long. There are limits to what they can steal by a taxation. So they, they make up this piece of paper and they call it a treasury bill. And then they take it over the Fed and the Fed loans the politicians as much money as they want. Now the politicians do have to put up collateral for this, but that collateral is you and your children. So in return, the politicians get whatever they want. The bankers make loads of interest and then they reinvest a portion of their loot into the campaign coffers of their co-conspirators. So most of the most victims of this scheme don't even realize that they've been swindled. Uh, they just find that it's harder and harder to make ends meet. Uh, when the prices go up, the politicians drag out a few of these greedy CEOs for a TV scripted dressing down. It's never the politicians' fault. They just blame greed. But eventually, folks start to figure this out. They start using other forms of currency that aren't vulnerable to this inflation tax. That's when the politicians go to work outlawing potential rivals to the Fed. And meanwhile, the people get poorer and poorer, the wars go on and on, abroad and at home. So without the Federal Reserve, who would pay for 900 military bases in 135 countries and more armed conflicts than I can count? Without the Fed, who would pay for 1.5 billion rounds of hollow point ammunition for domestic use by the Department of Homeland Security? Without the Fed, who would pay to keep a million peaceful pot smokers in cages? Yeah! Who would buy thousands of free tanks as gifts for local small town police forces? Who would pay for the new fusion center in South Philly? Mm. Mm. Who would pay for the drone base in Horsham? Who would pay for the 70,000 blue-shirted goons that are groping old ladies and children at the airport? So, 
when the Fed's power is stripped away, we are going to enjoy the most incredible renaissance of freedom and prosperity that the world has ever known. That's why we need to end the Fed. The very future of the world depends upon it. So it's important that we understand some of the tactics that the ruling class uses to maintain their grip. A criminal racket that extracts millions, trillions of dollars, is not just going to step aside when their power is challenged. Bernard von Nothaus created the Liberty Dollar as an honest alternative to the Federal Reserve. He issued huge quantities of silver tokens and transferable warehouse receipts for precious metals. His customers were thrilled to have an easy-to-use currency that retained its value while the government currencies were losing its value. He even created an electronic Liberty Dollar that could be transferred as easily as PayPal. For his trouble, he earned a federal prosecution and had $7 million in precious metals stolen from the Liberty Dollar vaults. Bernard was convicted of this heinous crime, quote, making, possessing, and selling his own coins. That's right, that's, that's, a, that's a crime. He's still awaiting sentencing, but he could spend the rest of his life in jail. When he was sentenced, U.S. Attorney Ann Tompkins made this announcement at the verdict. Attempts to undermine the legitimate currency of this country are simply a unique form of domestic terrorism. While these forms of anti-government activities do not involve violence, they are every bit as insidious and represent a clear and present danger to the economic stability of this country. She added, we are determined to meet these threats through infiltration, disruption, and dismantling of organizations which seek to challenge the legitimacy of our democratic form of government. Wow. I mean, are you challenging the legitimacy of the U.S. government? Yes! Welcome to the club. That's all it takes now to be considered a terrorist. So Bernard had the right idea, but the Liberty Dollar had an Achilles heel. It had a central pot of gold and, an, and a hierarchical structure that proved vulnerable to the federal thuggery. So he was just a little bit ahead of his time. But today, we live in a golden age of information sharing. We have witnessed and are participating in the birth of Bitcoin. Woo! It's hopefully the first of many decentralized cryptocurrencies that I believe will trigger an end to central banking. Faxes and email nullified the post office's monopoly. Internet video and video phones nullified the TV monopoly. Social media has destroyed the grip of fake news outlets. We even had the emergence of 3D printers, which may ultimately nullify the regulatory stranglehold on gun manufacturers. Woo! Yeah. Bitcoin is starting to scare the establishment because it has the power to nullify the Federal Reserve. Now, the Feds recently seized the accounts of a large Bitcoin exchange, but that doesn't matter. They can only play whack-a-mole with the exchange houses. As more businesses begin to accept Bitcoin, the need for the exchanges diminishes. The Bitcoin community is highly innovative, decentralized, highly motivated, and stunningly resilient. So they can pass all the laws they want. They can deploy their obedient media mouthpieces and condemn Bitcoin users, but without a central target, to, uh, without a central target, they stand like a king giving orders to the ocean. <laughs> they cannot stop the tide that is going to wash their cartel away. Woo! But do not expect the Fed to simply slink away into the darkness without a fight. If you challenge these crooks, you are now branded a terrorist. This is what you can expect. 
They stated publicly that they don't care if you are nonviolent. If your ideas pose a threat to their racket, you are a clear and present danger. And that's their code word. The code word, it means, uh, First Amendment be damned, we're going to shut you up. <laughs> so recently our friend Mike Heiss was contacted by a guy named Mr. Matthew from the FBI. Mike had made a comment on Facebook indicating that today we are going to physically end the Fed. So evidently, if we were going to metaphysically end the Fed, that would be fine. <laughs> but Mike's comment triggered a, a, a typical FBI fishing expedition. Now, unfortunately, some folks don't realize that the FBI, the FBI does not investigate to seek the truth. They seek prosecutions and convictions. Like all government employees, their number one concern is to look busy. Many have no moral limits and will easily send an innocent person to jail for 20 years if it gives them a shot at a bigger cubicle. So innocent people have nothing to hide, right? Well, it's normal for decent people to talk openly. Our instinct is to clear up any perceived misunderstanding. Honest people favor transparency, but we must resist the urge to interact directly with these people in any way. They are trained to deceive and earn our trust, but their track record for honesty is absolutely appalling. Just having a conversation with them gives them the opportunity to lie about what you said. And it doesn't matter if you record the conversation, because if you go to trial, the judge just might say, well, you know, we're not going to let you present that. In fact, we're going to tell you, you're not even allowed to mention it to the jury in your own defense. So do not talk to them. Don't let your family talk to them. Ignore them. Their goal is to ruin lives, not to vindicate you. The best I advice I can give you is never talk to cops. Never. Yeah. But now I'm going to break my own rule. I'm going to speak directly to any badged authority figures that are monitoring us right now. What you're doing is evil. Even though you may have made a career following orders, you still have a choice. You don't have to harass obviously innocent people. You don't have to ruin the lives of good people to defend your criminal masters. The most heinous acts in human history have been committed while just following orders. That's right. You may have started your career in, in law enforcement with a genuine desire to fight evil or protect the innocent or bring bad people to justice, but it probably didn't take you long to realize that our justice system is corrupt to the core. How many innocent people have you seen entrapped, framed, or persecuted for victimless crimes? How many times have you cringed looked away, and remained silent about injustice in your own department. Does it eat away at your soul? Your badge, your costume, your boss's approval, these things don't make you the good guy. History will look back on you as the bad guy, the way we look back on slave owners and Nazis. So do the right thing. Join us. As our friend Larkin Rose said it best, put down the badge and join humanity. We're ready to accept you. And when you do, we're going to protect your freedom as well. Stop harassing and spying on peaceful people and be the good guy. Yeah. The, the system that you have sworn allegiance to is crumbling under its own weight. We're already, the build, we're already building the institutions that are making it obsolete. You have an open invitation to join us. They use violence, coercion, and deceit. So that means that we use love, voluntary cooperation, and truth. They are decentralized and hierarchical. So we are decentralized, adaptable, and much more resilient. They are losing the propaganda war. They bleed trillions every year on a pathetic security apparatus, government schools, and fake news outlets. How long can they keep it up? They require force to achieve their goals. So we must embrace the philosophy of non-aggression to prevail. 
That's how we win. That's how we end the Fed. Woo! Jim Matt, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Woo! Don't talk to cops. That's what he always says. All right, we have a special treat. You all familiar with Steve Miller? Woo!